Well, where to begin? Let's start with Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, who is actually in many ways better than the other candidates, but by the standards of, of history, I guess, that isn't really saying a lot. As uh, not even that long ago, in uh, 2000, maybe it was 2008, certainly 2004, I think both years, Kucinich, Dennis Kucinich ran. And if you put Dennis Kucinich up against Bernie Sanders, the things that they say, what they're about, what they stand for, Kucinich is um, better. He seems to um, be more aware of what's going on, and certainly in the area of foreign policy. Kucinich is much better. That's the area where Sanders really really seems to be lacking. He doesn't want to uh, say anything too, I don't know, extraordinary, I guess, about uh, Syria or Libya or the so-called Arab Spring. And um, he, he doesn't want to even imply uh, that there, there might be other things going on. That, uh, that the United States, in the time that Clinton was in the State Department, in fact, might have had something to do with creating the conditions uh, that uh, have led to the situation we have uh, now, certainly in Libya and, uh, and in Syria as well. You know, I'm not going to go as far as to say, as, as others have, that ISIS is directly a creation, I suppose, for lack of a better word, of the United States. But certainly, certainly many, many believe that. And certainly, um, it, it looks very much as the U.S. has been um, behind the destabilization, the destabilization of Libya, which led to them di directly involving themselves on the side of the so-called rebels in overthrowing the government of Libya right up into uh, the grotesque sort of <laughs> what happened to Gaddafi, whatever you think of Gaddafi still is disgusting and grotesque. Which, which Clinton seems to be all right with. There's that video where she cackles about what happened to Gaddafi. You can find that online. And in Syria as well. Lots of questions remain. There, there are a lot of people who think the U.S. isn't even the main instigator. You know, there are other countries. And the U.S. is sort of, I don't know, what they say, leading from behind. I don't know. And, and even now, there are many who say that... Um, some who say that both Obama and Kerry, John Kerry, really don't want to go down the road that has been uh, laid out uh, in Syria and would rather find a way of working with the Russians at this point at least. I don't know if that's true, but that's what uh, some have said. Uh, Webster Tarpley, uh, Thier Mason, they seem to they seem to suggest this at least. So at any rate, foreign policy. Uh, Sanders is bad on that, and that leads me into what would uh, the second topic that I wanted to uh, cover in this video today: Syria. And, you know, we're being told all kinds of things about Syria, and it looks even in the Maybe even in the Western news, certainly in the news coming from um, alternative sources that are more uh, in line with um, what the Russians or people in the East might think, Russia Today and others, that, um, you know, the, um, the so-called rebels decided they didn't want to have a meeting. And uh, now... Now we're looking at uh, a continuation of the Russian campaign. 
and the, and, and successes, according to uh, many news sources, of the Syrian uh, army and of the Russian um, air campaign, especially in Aleppo. Um, it's it's hard to say that uh, there is no solution to to Syria because they're. There may be, as, as sad as the world seems, there may well very, very well be a military solution that the Russians are and the Syrians are enacting, conducting, performing even now. And um, but it, it's very ugly. We hear uh, the the various Gulf states might send troops or whatever. There's fears that Turkey might directly invade Syria. There's a base being built, uh, allegedly, by the Americans, an air base in, in Syria, without the consent of the Syrian government. And this is where the whole problem, um, where we have to take a stand one way or the other, or we have to say one way or the other, sort of what... Uh, the, you see, the entire problem is the United States believes, along with other Western nations, you know, who are in league with the United States, who are really add-ons of the United States in foreign policy issues in many cases, although in some ways they're not, but that becomes very complex. The whole thing is very complex. And you can't even say the United States, because the White House might have one policy, the neocon group over here might have a different policy, different people within the whole um, hierarchy of the system, of the establishment, might be working at odds with one another. Uh, but to, to the extent that we can say that the United States has its own coherent foreign policy, the, the policy seems to be that uh, they, they think that they can um, organize countries around the world to their benefit with no regard to uh, the legitimate or at least uh, the perceived re legitimate governments of these countries, such as Libya, Syria, Iraq, and the list goes on and on, who, who knows how far back. They could get away with it before, but now, and I suppose this is part of what I, a third topic that I often go on about, the United States is in a period of decline. They claim not to be, but, but they most definitely are. And you see that quite um, obviously in the, in the realm of foreign policy. And certainly it's, it's becoming um, obvious and, and quite relevant in, um, in the, uh, the realm of domestic policy. So, so lastly, I would just like to talk about the jobs reports. I mean, what, what is this? Now they're trying to fool the American people about things that the American people have to be directly affected by. And that's not possible to tell the American people that the economy has gotten better or it's, get, it's good or it's better or what have you, when clearly it's not. And that's why you have the, the, the strange occurrence, the strange election results, the strange polls, the strange um, alignments on the one side and the Republicans, nobody wants an establishment candidate. Trump, it, not that he would be of any benefit, at least domestically. His foreign policy is in some ways, you know, he says, let the Russians take care of ISIS. That's what he says. And on the other side, Bernie Sanders. This is how these people can appear to be popular and relevant within the mainstream is because the mainstream American on the street knows that his, um, his fortunes have, uh, have turned uh, in, a, in a bad way, have gone sour. And that's really the, the reason why people like Bernie Sanders can appear so popular. I just wish that Bernie Sanders were, were better. I'll leave it there for now.